Hey, what's going on people? Hope you guys are doing good. Today we're gonna to be talking about this, the Sony ZV-1. Now I know I'm not a camera channel, I'm a tech channel, but I bought this for my tech videos and I wanna talk about why I bought a camera that's over a year old, because this camera is actually quite good. Let's talk about that and what my ZV-1 setup looks like. So one of the reasons why I picked up the ZV-1 is ease of use. It's just a super easy camera to use, and that's because of five different things. The first is the background defocus feature. You can literally just hit a button and it'll go from keeping everything in focus to defocusing it and isolating the subject from the background just off a click of a button. There's also the product showcase feature, which will basically turn off face tracking and then allow whatever you're holding up to the camera to be in focus and then immediately go back to your face or body or whatever else was in focus. It works really, really good. Also, whenever you want to turn on the ZV-1, you just gotta open up the screen like that and then it turns on. To turn it off, close the screen and it will turn off. I mean, that's really easy and simple. It also has really good microphones, and when you pop on the included dead cat, you can get great audio without having to hook up a microphone, even though it does have a mic jack, which is definitely a major win. And the last thing is all of the auto features. This has great um, autofocus. It can track your face good. It can track any subject, pretty much. All you have to do is just touch, because it does support touch tracking. And it has great auto exposure capabilities, auto white balance capabilities, and the stabilization is really good because not only does it have regular um, OIS, it also features the active or software stabilization that Sony has been implementing in their most recent cameras, which is awesome. And it really smooths things out. So the ZV-1 is actually a great camera. You just open it up and start shooting. And this is an example of what the audio sounds like. Just the onboard microphone using the dead cat. And personally, I think it sounds pretty good. So let me know what you guys think. Some other reasons why I really like the Sony ZV-1 include the fact that it has built-in NDs. So it has a built-in uh, ND filter that is great for times where it's super bright. It also has a recording tally light on the front, which is something that you don't see in their alpha cameras, but you do see it on the FX3. And overall, it's just a great video-centric camera, unlike the RX100 series, which is more for photography. And you can tell this because there's a huge record button right up top next to the shutter, whereas the RX100 series has the smallest, tiniest little record button that's kind of awkward to press. So outside of those few features, well, several features, the ZV-1 just takes great looking video. I mean, you could just put this thing into auto mode and go around and shoot and vlog and capture social media videos really easy. I can guarantee you it's going to look good. And because of that f1.8 aperture, you're actually gonna get great low light video and pictures. It's just an all around great portable compact camera, but it's not perfect. And that's where my setup comes in. The first thing I wanna talk about is the SD card that I'm using. So I'm using one of Lexar's brand new cards. This is the 1667 card. It has all the ratings that you should care about. It's V60, U3. 
It has 250 megabytes per second for the read and write, and overall, it's just a really reliable card. And it pairs beautifully with the ZV-1 since this can capture 4K video, and it can go all the way up to 960 frames per second if you want to shoot high frame rate. And that's where this card really shines, and I, I just think that these two pair great. So not only does it have great speeds and excellent reliability, it's also really affordable. I'm going to drop links to this card as well as everything else mentioned in this video in the description if you feel like checking anything out. But even if you don't have a ZV-1 and you just have like an A7S III or other uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera that takes SD cards, check out this one. It's really good. Probably the number one complaint when it comes to the ZV-1 or the RX100 series is just how tight it is whenever you're trying to vlog because it's like 28 millimeters after you add on stabilization and all that. Well, this little adapter right here, which isn't new, but I haven't seen this white color to match this beautiful white ZV-1 um, in any other videos. So this is a wide angle adapter and also a macro lens that you just screw onto the front of the ZV-1 and it will widen that field of view. You do have to attach this little filter ring right here using some 3M tape, but the installation is super easy and it really makes a huge difference. Let me just show you. So this is with the wide angle adapter on. I'm gonna remove it and show you just how punched in that field of view can get without the wide angle adapter. And I'm using active stabilization, which punches in even further. So let me go ahead and take it off now. So this is without the wide angle adapter and you can see how punched in it is. It's not awful by any means, but it could be a lot wider, which is where that wide angle adapter really comes into play. I think a lot of people blow this out of proportion. I think vlogging without a wide angle adapter is just fine, but if you want to fit more in the frame, it's definitely needed. So Ulanzi makes this adapter and I think it's like 50 bucks, so it's really affordable. And what's great is if you want to do like a macro shot, you could just screw off the wide angle portion. And now you have a macro lens underneath the wide angle, like that, which is really, really cool. So if you wanted to get like some close up, uh, whether it's photos or video, you can do that all with the same adapter. To make hand holding the ZV-1 a little bit easier, you can get a tripod like this. Now I know Sony has their own and it's kind of expensive. It's like a hundred bucks, if not more. It's a Bluetooth um, tripod with the little controller down here. However, this one is like 50 bucks. And what's nice about this one over the Sony is that this little remote right here can just pop out. So now you can put this tripod on a table and then still control your camera using this remote. And that's pretty practical, especially if you're doing things for Instagram or even if you're recording like a vlog for YouTube. And then I put a Ulanzi quick release plate on top of this tripod. And I featured this in my recent setup tour. So if you missed that video, make sure to check it out. But basically it just makes taking cameras off of things like this tripod super easy. And then you can lock it like so, so you don't have to worry about it coming off. Unlock it, boom. What's really cool about this little tripod is if you wanted to record portrait video, you could easily do it. You just have to press this button back here, rotate it around like so, then just push this button, drop it, and then because it is quick release, you could easily just remount it like that, flip up the screen, and boom. Now you are ready for Instagram reels or TikTok videos or Instagram stories, whatever you wanna do in vertical video. It's pretty nice. So this tripod from JJC, which also happens to be my initials, kinda of crazy, is not the best quality when it comes to build. Like it does feel pretty cheap and you can even see where the actual tripod legs right here have buckled a little bit because of how I have it positioned with my sling, which I'll show you in a minute. But it's only like $49. It comes with the tripod, it has Bluetooth connectivity, it comes with the remote, and if you look at it in comparison to the Sony tripod, which is like 140 something, almost 150, plus an additional $80 for a Bluetooth remote, it's a pretty good deal. Especially if you just want something that you can toss in a bag, you don't care if it gets banged up a little bit, this is the tripod to get. Now I know I said that the ZV-1 has excellent audio for its built-in microphone and this dead cat does work really good, but there's gonna be times where you wanna be a little bit further away from the camera or maybe you don't want all the background noise and you really want to get some good isolation when it comes to your audio. Well, that's where this comes in. This is the Rode Wireless Go and what's great about it is A, it comes in this white color, so it matches the ZV-1 perfectly. You don't have to have a lav because this actually doubles as a lav, and it has this little white dead cap, so you just snap it on like so, and there you go. And then if you want to connect the actual wireless go to the ZV-1, 
you just use the cold shoe or the hot shoe. So this just slides right off like so. And then you just put the Z or the road wireless go right into the hot shoe. And look at that. I posted a picture of this on Instagram and on Twitter and you guys loved it. I mean, look at that setup. That looks so clean. We got the wide angle adapter, white ZV-1, white wireless go. The only thing that's not white is this base plate, which I'm gonna fix that. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram because I will update you on that. But that's just a clean setup. And mounting this to yourself is super easy with this little magnetic adapter. So you just put this on the inside of your shirt or you can put this on the outside of your shirt, depending on what you wanna do. And then just, it links right to it. So it'll snap right onto your clothing, your backpack, or wherever you want to mount this little microphone. One thing I need to fix is I need to find like a little base plate to go on the bottom of the ZV-1 that is a silver color to match this entire setup. I haven't found one yet, but if you guys know of one, please link it down below. The only ones I've seen are black and I'm trying to find a silver one. If I can't find one, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the black one down and then paint it silver. That way it matches everything. But the reason why I need that base plate is because it's really annoying to have to unscrew this every single time I want to change the battery, which brings me to the next problem with the ZV-1 is battery life. However, luckily, because these batteries have been around for a while, you can pick up batteries like these from Numoa, I think that's how you say it, for 20 bucks and you get three of them and it comes with these little sleeves and it comes with a triple battery charger, which is a hell of a deal for 20 bucks. So that's a quick way to fix the battery life. I mean, just buy more batteries and they're really cheap and affordable. And as long as you can have access to this battery door, without having to move the plates, it's easy to swap them out. So I just gotta fix that one little issue, but once I do, the setup will be complete. And to keep everything nice, neat, organized, and protected, I have the brand new Peak Design Field Pouch. This thing is dope, I love the blue color. It just closes up using Velcro, and on the inside you have a ton of space here. So on the inside I have like a battery pack, and then I have all the stuff that I've already showed you, including like the Rode mic, there's even a spot right here that you can store your wallet. So I have my Ridge wallet in here. This is the Damascus Steel version and it is awesome. Holds like 20 cards or something like that. We have like a little money band here. This wallet is legit. Like you could throw this at somebody and probably knock them out. And then I have like all of my batteries in here, the ones that I just showed you. And you have little sleeves right here for SD cards if you wanted to put SD cards in there or if you have like various SIM cards, I guess you could put in there. But I like that little additional pocket. It's just a great little storage pocket and it's elastic, so you can put a lot of stuff in there. But this little sling is legit, this little field pouch. So if I close this up on the back end, this is actually for like a belt loop. So you could put, this, put your belt through this and then just use it as like a fanny pack. However, I just take this little tripod, pull out the legs a little bit, like so and then just slide it through the back right here. And now I have like a little area to keep the tripod. Since I don't need this all of the time, it just tucks away. And then I can just toss this little field pouch on or sling and wear it around Disney or the mall, maybe Disney Springs, City Walk, places where I need like a small bag, but nothing big. And I can still bring all of the essentials I need to record some video. Pretty nice. So what do you guys think of the ZV-1 and my current ZV-1 setup? Do you think it's really good? Do you think it needs some work? Sound off down in the comment section. Also, everything that you saw in this video can be purchased at the links in the description. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Consider giving it a thumbs up if you did. And if you want to see more camera videos, let me know by either commenting down below, hit me up on social, or just hitting that like button. And I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.